Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod Sleep Stories. My name is Chris, and tonight I will guide you on your journey to a night of restful, revitalizing sleep as you listen to the retelling of the classic American novel, The Great Gatsby. We'll dive in between the lines of the book, exploring Daisy and Gatsby's first meeting in the magnolia-coated streets of the South. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to unwind and find comfort in the space that we are in. Close your eyes and relax the muscles in your body. Unclench your jaw. Drop your shoulders and allow your hands to fall flat. Embrace the feeling of calmness as your relaxed body sinks deeper into the mattress. As you sink more and more into the mattress, let your imagination take hold. Picture a lake. Is the lake small or large? What kind of trees do you picture surrounding the lake and extending into the mountains surrounding it? Do you see white birch trees or tall emerald pines? Is it autumn on the lake? where the trees are ablaze in a sea of orange, yellow, and red? Or is it summer, where the forest is alive and humming with the warmth of the sun? Imagine yourself floating on that lake. Are you in an inner tube, or perhaps a kayak? Maybe you're on a nice boat, lounging in the sun, and letting the waves gently rock you side to side, side to side, side to side. Wherever you are, embrace the feeling of that sun on your skin. Feel the gentle push and pull of the water underneath you, soothing you as it moves back and forth. Feel the warmth on your face, and the refreshing splash of water against your hand. Breathe in that fresh air that has mingled with distant mountains and nearby trees. Now that we've taken the time to relax and unwind, let us journey back to the 1920s. It was a warm Friday night in Louisville, Kentucky. The humid summer air seemed to buzz with the energy of all the young people making their way downtown. Strolling down any street in the city, you would pass underneath strong, towering magnolia trees, which filled the air with their honey-sweet scent and dusted the sidewalks with white, waxy petals. Honeysuckles clung to the brick sides of buildings where patrons scurried inside for a nice meal, lovers exchanging glances of admiration, long-married couples strolling hand in hand, and new couples shyly making conversation. Then there were the single men from the nearby army base, exploring the town and looking for a way to take the edge off after a long week. Jay Gatsby, was one such man. He strolled down the magnolia-peppered street with the type of confidence many men dream about. Looking at him, you'd never imagine he had grown up in the middle of nowhere. He seemed like a man that was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, the type of man who grew up learning Latin from foreign tutors and math from great professors. But... Gatsby was not that type of man. In reality, he was hardly even Gatsby at all. He made his way into a nearby establishment, where velvet booths lined the walls and musicians played live music on an adjoining stage. People served drinks on silver trays, while young folks laughed and dined on fine southern cooking. Gatsby got himself a drink and settled in a seat, 
All around him, single women began to speak in whispers and cast him coy glances. It wasn't the attention that was unfamiliar to him, but something in that establishment that very night was unfamiliar to him. In the far corner of the room, one group of people seemed to laugh louder than anyone else. And in that group, one glorious laugh stood out. Gatsby glanced over to the counter and met the eye of a young woman. She was fashionably clothed, with bright eyes that seemed to make a promise. A promise that under her gaze, in her presence, you would never be bored. The moment Gatsby looked into those eyes, he was drawn toward her, as if a spell had been cast. With that kind of magnetism, Gatsby found himself gliding in her direction. As he grew closer, he could hear her brilliant voice. She spoke with a sense of excitement and wonder that seemed to shake those around her to life. There was a youthful vitality in her words, yet, at the same time, a wise sophistication that seemed impossible for a woman of her age to possess. Gatsby found her surrounded by a group of fashionably dressed men and women. Several of the men gazed at the woman with lust, but none of them gazed at her the way Gatsby did, as though she was the only woman in the world. And Daisy? Daisy noticed that. Daisy had been born and raised in Louisville. The daughter of wildly wealthy and successful parents, her whole life she had never wanted for anything. She had been educated by the best of the best, given opportunities beyond many people's wildest dreams. But there was something missing. Most of the men who approached her bored her or looked over her as though she was a piece of fine china behind the glass of a cabinet that they intended to steal. But the man approaching her now Jay regarded her with a warmth she was entirely unfamiliar with. He was dressed in his army uniform, a captain's uniform no less. His hair was perfectly kept, and his eyes seemed to mirror her own youthful vitality. Daisy had met hundreds of men before. She had been courted by some of the wealthiest men in the state of Kentucky. But, None had had such an impact in such a short amount of time. Gatsby took her hand gently, kissing it with the softest touch of his lips. The table around seemed to fall silent. Or perhaps the two were so transfixed in each other, it was as if the world around them had been coated in a blanket of heavy snow. Hello. I'm Jay Gatsby. It's a pleasure to meet you. Gatsby said, his voice silky smooth. Daisy kept her hand in his, softly curling her manicured fingers around his pinky. Hello, Jay Gatsby. I'm Daisy Fay. Daisy replied. From that moment on, nothing else seemed to matter. Gatsby sat across from Daisy, hanging on to every word she said. She told the table tales of horse races, tales of encounters at galas and parties, experiences she had had traveling the globe with her family. It was clear to Gatsby that Daisy had lived a life of sophistication and extravagance that he had dreamt of his whole life. Gatsby joined in the conversation, using the voice and manners he had trained himself to use over the past few years. Though he grew up poor on a farm in North Dakota, he strived to appear regal and refined, and judging by everyone's reaction to him, all his training had worked. They laughed at all his jokes. 
some of the women leaned over the table to get closer to him, starry-eyed and enamored. Some of the men puffed up their chests, trying to draw the attention of their date's wandering eyes. For several hours, they laughed and entertained. Soon, the venue was ready to close down for the night. Daisy's fellow aristocrats waved for her to follow them home, but Daisy gave Gatsby a smile, then turned to her friends and said, I've got a way home, thank you. Jay's heart began to beat even faster in his chest. Though he appeared cool and collected on the outside, on the inside, he was absolutely mesmerized by Daisy. He felt as though she was too perfect, too extravagant for this world. Nevertheless, he gently took Daisy by the arm as he led her out of the establishment and onto the city streets. This time of night, the streets lost that exciting buzz. There was a sense of stillness, a romantic energy that seemed to float through the air, casting a dreamy spell on everyone making their way down the streets. The air was still full and humid, but a soft evening breeze wound its way through the cobblestone streets. Around Daisy and Jay, Everything was illuminated by the soft glow of streetlights. For the first time ever, the two lovebirds found themselves alone. Daisy led the way to her family's mansion in the wealthy part of town. They walked in silence for a few moments, but it didn't last for long. Daisy began asking Gatsby about his past. Gatsby knew, deep down, that a woman like Daisy would never love a man like him if she knew how unremarkable his upbringing had been. This was a woman who regularly had millionaires trying to win her affections. What interest could she possibly have in a man that grew up tending a farm on the windswept prairies of North Dakota? As they walked down the cobblestone streets, Underneath the starry sky, Gatsby told Daisy the story he had told almost everyone. He had been born to a wealthy family. His father owned a steel company, and he had grown up traveling the globe. He told Daisy about his imaginary time spent on the French Riviera and strolling the streets of London. As he talked, Gatsby couldn't help but notice the way Daisy hung on to every word he said. She was eloquent and entertaining to listen to, but when she listened, there was a kindness to her, a comforting half-smile etched onto her lips that told you you were being heard. The walk to her estate wasn't a short one, they crossed through streets with towering oak trees and through parks that buzzed with the sound of a million crickets singing their song to the universe. The entire walk, the two talked with a kind of fervor that can only be found on first dates. Daisy talked about the future she wanted with shiny things, fine clothes, and luxurious trips to foreign lands. Gatsby wanted that as well, but that was quite a bit further off for him than it was for Daisy. For a moment, Daisy hesitated by the edge of a pond in a park. It was a perfect mirror of the night sky. The moon shined on the glossy surface, rippling slightly at the touch of dragonflies and fireflies tiptoeing across the water. Daisy knelt down, tracing her fingers across the surface. My parents have been trying to set me up for marriage, you know. They have suitors come to the parlor to meet with me all the time. It seems like every weekend there's some son of a diplomat or heir to a business waiting for me downstairs, but they bore me. 
It doesn't interest me to be with someone who only speaks of money and business. I want someone who can excite me. Someone with charisma. Who sees the world as I do. As Daisy spoke, her eyes never wavered from the pond. Gatsby dared to slide his hand into hers and squeeze it reassuringly. The two exchanged a look. A look that said more than words ever could. When they finally arrived at the stunning mansion Daisy's family owned, there was a certain magic in the air. They hovered in front of the home, where warm candles burned behind the thick window panes. Daisy leaned forward, placing a single kiss on Jay's cheek. But she lingered for a moment too long. In that moment, Gatsby felt himself falling even deeper for Daisy. She smiled coyly as she made her way down the walkway to her front door and looked back. So I'll be seeing you tomorrow, won't I? About 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. came after a night of sweet dreams. Gatsby paced in front of the house his soul feeling lighter than ever. He was surprised to see Daisy rushing out of the house, wearing nothing but a bathing suit. She gleefully took Gatsby by the hand and urged him to follow her down, down, down the street. When they arrived at a local river, Gatsby was surprised, to say the least, Daisy lowered herself into the cold water, beating the heat of the humid Kentucky day. The freedom in her movements made Gatsby feel as though he was seeing something precious, something few people would ever experience. She coaxed Gatsby into the water. As the fresh water splashed against his body, Gatsby found himself smiling as though he was a small child again. He and Daisy reclined in the water against some smooth rocks, letting the river's current wash over them. They lounged there all day, playing like children, splashing each other and giggling at the world around them. They watched the sun filter through the tree canopy above, causing shadows to dance over the water and riverbed. For lunch, they sat on the riverbed, and dined on cucumber sandwiches made by one of Daisy's servants. It felt as though the moment belonged in a painting in a museum somewhere. They relaxed as the sun kissed their skin and the birds chirped overhead. Around them, Spanish moss clung to ancient trees, dipping in the slow-moving water and rippling gently as if they were swathes of fine silk. But this wasn't the last time Gatsby and Daisy would see one another. For the next month, the two snuck away every moment that they were able to. Their activities ranged from unsophisticated dips in the river to classy soirees at mansions around Louisville. Daisy seemed to fit seamlessly no matter what crowd she found herself in, something that had taken Gatsby years to master. It wasn't long before Gatsby realized the truth. This woman, the beautiful, intelligent, charming, captivating Daisy, he knew she was the woman he wanted to marry. But then, the news came. Gatsby was going to be sent to war. There was no way to escape this, no way to keep him and the glorious moments they spent together frozen in time. When Gatsby told Daisy the news, her heartbreak was obvious. The day before he left for New York to prepare for shipping out, Daisy met him in his simple home. The two lay in bed, holding each other for quite some time, as though holding each other tightly now would keep them together through the distance and time. 
Daisy borrowed her head into Jay's neck, running her hands through his hair gently. He rubbed her back and held her against his chest, finding comfort in the soft beat, beat, beat of her heart in her chest. He told Daisy that when he returned home from the war, he would marry her. Tears welled in Daisy's eyes at the thought, at the promise that he was making. She agreed. When he returns from the wretched war, they would be together and live the rest of their lives in comfort and luxury, holding each other close. When Gatsby dropped Daisy off at her house that day, she could hardly stand to let him go. She kissed him deeply and fully, eyes shimmering with tears. As he watched her walk up the walkway into her house, he felt a sense of loss he had never experienced before. He spent several weeks in New York, preparing to be sent to the front. Daisy packing her bags, intending to go to New York to say goodbye to him one last time. But her parents forbade it, keeping Daisy in the house. Daisy sat by the window in her bedroom as it began to rain that day. She watched every raindrop as it traced down, down, down her window and onto the roof below. Just like that, the lovers were separated. They spent nearly every moment dreaming of one another, hoping for the day they would be reunited. But the days turned to weeks, the weeks turned to months, and the months, they turned to years. Daisy's parents refused the idea that she would marry a man in the army, even a man who claimed to have a rich family. Though she begged for them to hear her, to accept her love of Gatsby, it was no use. Two years after Gatsby left for war, Daisy was engaged to Tom, a wealthy society man. He was everything Daisy's parents had always wanted for her. But the day before the wedding, Daisy had doubts. A letter had arrived from Jay, who had learned the truth about Daisy's engagement. Daisy collapsed on a sofa, drunk and sobbing. Her friend tried to comfort her, but it was no use. Daisy felt as if her fate was sealed. She would never see Gatsby, the love of her life, again. But all wars come to an end. At the end of the war, Gatsby returned home and got to work making a fortune. There was no other woman for him, he decided. Daisy was the woman he was going to spend his life with. Gatsby walked the streets of Louisville, retracing the steps he and Daisy had once taken together. He outstretched his hands as if he was embracing bits of Daisy that had been left in the air all those years ago. His work brought him the fortune he had always lied about having. But it didn't bring him happiness. Not yet. His journey brought him to East Egg, where Daisy and her husband Tom had bought themselves a mansion on the lake. Gatsby bought himself a mansion, a lavish mansion, rivaling the home that Daisy grew up in. Every night, he threw luxurious parties that he didn't even attend. Many nights, he'd stand out on his back lawn, staring wistfully across the water at a glistening green light, the light at the end of Daisy and Tom's dock. It was painful, knowing his love was just across the water, just out of reach. Though it had been five years since he had seen her, his love had never waned, even after learning of her marriage. But 
Gatsby longed to hold Daisy. He longed to see her, to hear her, to bask in the beauty of her smile. And, little did he know, Daisy had longed for him for quite some time. She and Tom were not in love. His affections were with another woman. So Daisy spent long days lounging in the house, dreaming of times when things were better. Gatsby couldn't take it anymore. He arranged for tea to be had one afternoon, begging his neighbor, Nick Carraway, to invite Daisy. Daisy gleefully agreed, unaware of who she was truly meeting with. When she entered the mansion, Gatsby was nowhere to be found. Nick greeted her with a smile, but fell silent as the front door opened. Gatsby stepped in, drenched from the rain after a walk around the house. His normally charismatic demeanor was racked with a nervousness no one had ever seen before. Daisy stood there in silence, stunned. Upon seeing Gatsby, all those feelings came crashing back. It had been five long years, but it felt as though she was seeing him for the first time all over again. Her mind drifted back to those long days spent by the river, talking about philosophy and their future. She could practically feel his arms around her, as they had been the very last time they saw one another. She stood before her long-lost love in a daze. Outside, rain poured against the mansion windows, contrasting the warm glow of the expensive candles and intricate lamps in the room. The conversation was stiff, uncomfortable, nothing like Gatsby imagined it would be. Gatsby disappeared into a side room, dragging Nick alongside him. He confided in Nick that things weren't the same. He had made a mistake. He never should have invited Daisy. But Nick gave him a reassuring smile, agreeing to leave the two alone. When he returned 45 minutes later, he found the two positively glowing. Daisy stared at Gatsby with happy tears in her eyes, overwhelmed by him. Gatsby could hardly contain his excitement and admiration, spilling it all over the room with every word, every motion, every glance. Gatsby gave Daisy a tour of his mansion, which left her quite speechless. Gatsby had finer things than she had now, finer things than she had ever had growing up. He was not a simple army man, as his parents had repeatedly tried to frame him. Gatsby called out to a member of his staff, requesting a song be played. As the music swelled around them, Gatsby took Daisy by the hand, guiding her in a slow dance. The rest of the room faded away almost immediately. They danced slowly, eyes firmly locked on each other, hands clasped around each other with the same desperation they had all those years ago. They were experiencing true love, the type of love few people get to experience in their lifetime. And in that moment, dancing by the fire as rain poured just outside, they were happy, truly gleefully, unashamedly happy. I hope you've enjoyed this sleep story and it has helped you reach a night of relaxing, restful sleep. Please, join me again tomorrow for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams. <laughs>